Right, so yes, new season and we're the manager of Venezuela now. We'll talk about that later. Hello and welcome back to the start of Season 2 of Careering Onwards, here with me, Mr Grand 2, and we are still at Cambridge United, having been promoted, of course, last season in third place. We are now going to face the perils of Sky Bet League 1. Luckily, we, we should at least be a little bit more qualified. The board have finally decided at the third attempt that we can actually get our Continental A licence. I'm assuming, I'm assuming they were just embarrassed at the fact that the rest of the coaching department was more qualified than us. In fact, our assistant manager's reputation is actually, is actually higher than us, which is, I mean, that's great. Sorry, Mark, you're kind of, kind of playing second fiddle here. But that should help. It has been a very, very busy summer. Lots of ins, lots of outs. Let's get straight into it. So in terms of outs then, uh, quite a lot of players have left, mostly players that you haven't really heard of. Uh, Jabo Abiri has retired. We've also said goodbye to Harrison Dunk. He's gone to Dagenham and Redbridge. Um, I did kind of intend to keep him, but he refused to sign a new contract. We've also let Gary Deegan go. Obviously, he never really recovered from that massive six months out. He's gone to Derry City. We wish him well. Uh, we've also said goodbye to Paul Lewis. He's gone to Forest Green. Not awful. Not an awful player by any means. Pretty solid, but we've got better options now, I think. Daniel Jones has also gone. He's just physically kind of dropped off, but technically actually really quite a, a solid player. Not found a club yet, but um, hopefully we'll find one soon. Lewis John has gone as well, and otherwise it's just players from the reserves who you wouldn't necessarily know. In terms of actual sales, then, George Taft has gone to St Mirren for a little bit of cash. His contract was expiring. Um, hopefully he can see some success north of the border. We've also sold Kyle Noyle, mainly because I keep calling him Kevin, which is just confusing, but he's gone to Hull City. So he's, I mean, he's actually quite good. We never really used him, and he's kind of sort of he kicked up quite a lot of fuss he was injured quite a lot as well so yeah got a bit of money for him which is nice but in terms of the ins we have brought quite a lot of players in potentially some deals still to be done as well but this is the bulk of the business by far um we just i think improved the squad considerably all over the park which we needed to do i think it's something we needed to do because our squad really suffered last season from injuries especially and it wasn't necessarily the highest in quality particularly defensively which is where the main main area of improvement we're not going to go through all of these in sort of immense detail we'll get to know them as we go but we'll sort of go for go sort of positionally we've got the same goalkeepers that's not changed that could be an issue but left back we have improved i think with tom field who's joined us from brentford on a free all of these are frees and loans we're not we don't have the luxury of money at this kind of level i think he's, he's quite decent well-rounded lots of good 11s and 12s in all the key areas, physically and technically and mentally. Should be the improvement on Norville Williams and he can just stay here as a backup. Right back, we'll go across to that side. Now, James Brown, I really feel good about this transfer on loan from Millwall. Again, not quite as good as Tom Field, but some good, nice, well-rounded attributes in all the key areas. And in terms of star rating, is rated higher than what we've got. Um, we will keep... Of course, Leon Davis as the backup in that position. I have also brought in Callum Evans on a free as well. He, he just kind of can play both sides. Not as good by any means, but relatively solid if we need him in an emergency. Centre-back was definitely an area we needed to improve on. We've still got Greg Taylor. We've still got Harry Darling. But I think neither of them is going to be starting if everyone is fully fit. Lloyd-Jones has joined us from Luton Town. He never really played for Luton. Like barely played a game for them, was on loan at Plymouth for a bit. He's, in fact, he's barely ever played anywhere apart from at Swindon. Previously on the books at Liverpool, I think really very well-rounded and decent, good heading, marking, passing, tackling, everything you really need in a centre-back. Certainly at this kind of level, looks like he's going to do quite a good job. And alongside him, we are also going to have uh, one of two players that we've got on loan from Bolton. Bolton, of course, got relegated from League 1 to League 2, so we snapped up some of their guys we can't afford to buy them, but we can afford to loan them. Jordan Boone is one of them. He is, I mean, he looks really quite good. Lots of 12s, lots of 12s and 13s. And yeah, that's quite, quite nice. He is most natural as a left back, but we're going to play him as a left center back because I think he's more than capable of doing that. Hopefully he can do well this season for us. We have also brought in Tom Parks just as a bit of coverage. He was at Exeter last season. I'm just a, a solid player. He's only 28. Physically not the quickest, but some nice attributes technically and some okay mentals just to sort of be here as a, as a bit of a backup. Moving further forwards into midfield then, there's some potential 
players that will be coming in to bolster this as well. But we have got, as one of our midfield options, Elijah Dixon Bonner. He joins us from the Liverpool Academy. Never was likely to break through there. Uh, but I think a lot of decent things here. Passing of 13, vision of 13, I think is very solid. Some good physical um, marking and tackling attributes as well. Not, not the craziest physical stamina and strength of six is not ideal, but not not too bad. I think he's got a decent chance of doing quite well this season. May well end up starting for us as well. We've also brought in Jason Lowe, very experienced. Like again, he's only 28. It feels like he's been around forever. Um, Blackburn Rovers, the bulk of his career, but has played for Birmingham and Bolton. He's he's moving up the alphabet now. Moving up the alphabet with Cambridge United, and I think could do quite well for us. He's on a reasonable amount of money. Really nice mentals, not the craziest technicals, solid is the word for him, but some good physicals and some good mentals could be quite useful. Again, may end up starting, we've got a lot of, midfield was probably our strongest area last year, so that's the area which we sort of have the most players in. And then moving further forward, we brought some wingers in, let's go through them. Sam Greenwood joins us online from Arsenal, either footed, which I really like, good free kick taking, some nice attributes all over the place, dribbling, finishing is as well could could play on either side we still got will ferry he's not left um so going to be competing on that left hand side dennis politic is the other player we've got on loan from bolton romanian youth international again i think really well-rounded lots of nice attributes all over the place i think he's going to be starting for us on the right hand side going forwards we've also got otis carney's right footy but he can kind of play on both sides of the pitch some nice player traits in there some pretty solid attributes not the, not the best here is a backup, but looks quite good. Was most recently at Mansfield. And lastly, joining us from Southampton is a bit of an FM favourite of mine, Marcus Barnes, Jamaican international. Not the craziest attributes by any means, but a solid striker. He's a player I've got a lot of history on FM with. He was part of a York City side that I led from the National League North all the way to the Premier League. And he was the first goal scorer for us in the Premier League. He's, he's solid. He's here as a backup to, of course, Adam Ida, who is back on loan, as well as Will Ferry. He, he thinks he's going to be a regular starter. He might play a few games if Ida doesn't end up kicking on. I expect he'll certainly play a few games. So there we go. Plenty of players brought in. It's going to take a while for them all to gel together. Um, this is how the team is looking at this stage. Obviously, a lot of players still here from last season. The two loanies we've mentioned. Maris is still here. Adi Yamey is still here as well. Callum Burton, of course, in goal let me know what you think in the comments down below i think i think we've certainly improved the squad quite considerably but now let's address the the elephant in the room we are now also in charge of the venezuelan national team i mean i said i was going to look at international jobs um i didn't expect it to be to be this soon i saw that it was available there were a few other ones as well i applied just sort of kind of as a joke you know the serbian turkish and czech fa's they got the joke and they rejected us, but the Venezuelan FA thought it was thought it was a serious application, and and here we are. I'm not really sure what they see in a manager from the third division of English football, but you know there we go. I was going to say no, but then I read on their Wikipedia page that they are the only South American team to never qualify for the World Cup, which I mean that's a challenge that I can get behind. We are currently 42nd in the FIFA rankings, which I think is is just you know slightly inflated when you look at some of the teams that are apparently not as good as us. I mean, Nigeria, Iceland, Ghana, Russia, South Korea down there, Cameroon, Jamaica, Czech Republic. I mean, I'm not really sure. Egypt, I'm not sure I buy into that, really. But we've got some decent players. Solomon Rondon, of course, uh, out in China now, but had some success with Brest Brom. Yangel Herrera, pretty decent. Roberto Rosales is a good, solid player. Has been on FM for a while. Um, Farniaz, the goalkeeper. Farrat Farinez. However we say it, is a really good, solid, cheap goalkeeper pickup. They've got 1P, or 1P, however, we, however we're saying that one. He's at Malaga, pretty decent. They've got Penaranda as well. Sort of, it always causes you problems at Watford when you finally get, say, work permit. So, look, I mean, we're not going to focus on it. It's not going to be not going to be the main focus. The board, the FA, they, they want us to be competitive in World Cup qualification, um, which is it's not really a, you know, a particularly optimistic sign. Obviously, it's all one giant group. It's going to be difficult to get through with Argentina and Brazil. I've just seen that we've already played six matches, apparently. How have they gone? Got knocked out of the Copa America in the group stage. Lost lost to Argentina, as you'd expect. We beat Bolivia. Okay, how, does it, how many how many's left? How, how long have we got 
to try and say, there's quite a lot of games, loads of games still to play, okay. So we'll sort of touch on that, we'll see how it goes. If, the, if there's any chance that we actually do end up qualifying for the World Cup, we might get into that fifth place playoff place. Who knows about, uh, who knows about that? We might do any chance of qualifying um, realistically, then we will we'll touch on it. But otherwise, it will just be getting a passing mention. Anyway then, Cambridge, of course, is going to be the main focus. And we've got the first league match of the season in a few days' time. We'll go forward to that. It's going to be against Swindon Town, obviously. One of the teams who came up with us from League 2 last season. So not not as exciting. You want to play You want to play a League 1 team. You want to test yourself. Not against a team you've already played twice. But maybe we'll have a chance in that one. If we can't beat them, then, well, I don't think we're going to do particularly well. The board do only expect us to fight bravely against relegation. We are not predicted to do massively well. If we look at the old season preview, no players in the Dream 11, as you'd probably expect. We are, however, predicted to do better than all three of the other promoted sides and finish 21st. That does still mean we're going to get relegated, according to that. So, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting. I don't, I don't think we're going to do that badly. I'm cautiously optimistic that we should be getting sort of maybe towards mid-table, something like that. I don't think realistically we're going to be challenging for promotion or the playoffs or anything that silly, but I don't think we can get relegated either. And of course, if we are in danger of relegation, we can always just sort of kind of have a look and hopefully maybe get a job somewhere else. One of the journalists is from Blue Man Group. I said I was going to bring in another midfielder and this is the man who I'm going to go with. Final signing we're going to make this summer, Josh Ruffles most recently at Oxford United. I think it's just sort of a solid player, left-footed, which could be helpful for us. can kind of play in all three of the midfield roles pretty well, which is what I like to say. I like that versatility. Ten marking isn't necessarily the best, but otherwise, again, just a solid, well-rounded player. So we will bring him in, and that is going to be that for our business. New season, of course, so we have reset down to just the B+. It's going to take some getting used to. I'm used to that consistent consistent A plus rating all season. The board have nothing, nothing negative to say. They're happy about all of the transfers. The fans aren't massively pleased with all of them, but I don't really care what they think. I'm only interested in what my mate Paul Barry thinks about it. Um, first game of the season then, kick things off against Swindon Town. Some pretty big teams in the division. Hull City, probably the biggest and the favourites for promotion, having been relegated down from the championship we got QPR there as well, Charlton back again. Otherwise, MK Dons and AFC Wimbledon both in the same division. Always like to see that one. It, it's going to be it's going to be difficult. I think we're going to be competitive though. So I can't put Sam Greenwood on the bench for this one. He would be the ideal sort of bench winger to have. Unfortunately, uh, we have got five lone players in my preferred starting eleven at the start of the season. So yeah, well we'll, we'll see how things develop as they go. But this is how we're going to line up in the first game of the season against Swindon. Callum Burton continues. In goal, Tom Field is at left back with James Brown feeling good at right back. Jordan Boone is at left centre back position with Lloyd Jones alongside him. A completely new defence for us. Will it be interesting to see if they are an improvement? Dixon Bonner is going to be in the deep line playmaker role for this one. Adeyemi and Maris with a bit of continuity in central midfield. Will Ferry still on the left with Adam Ida still up front and Dennis Politic on the right hand side. Now, system wise, obviously this one didn't do massively well away from home but it's a new season new players i think we're going to go with it it's it's probably our most successful system anyway it's not like the other systems really got us any points away from home so we'll go with this one and just and probably lose three nil a lot of players making the debut for us today just the one debutant for swindon they've got some decent players of course jermaine anderson is a threat lloyd isgrove as well but not many new signings for them i mean if we're going to have any chance of doing well this season we need to be beating swindon even if it's away from home. They were the team that came up through the playoffs last year. They, they they did worse than we did. So, you know, if we can't beat them when they haven't really massively improved their team, it's a little bit of a concern, even if it is away from home. James Brown going in already, getting himself the yellow card, but it's a free kick from Maris, headed over, and it's a good early chance for us. Swindon, though, coming forwards, but Dennis Politic has robbed it back. Out to Will Ferry on the left-hand side, puts it across. The goalkeeper punts it, and Swindon can break it because Jones has completely missed the header. It's cleaned up by Boone, and we get away with it. I mean, that was it looked like there was a great chance for us. It still might be. Ferry's found Adam Ida, goes for the shot, and it's saved once again. End-to-end -end stuff here in 
the culture capital of the UK that is Swindon. Dixon Bonner puts it across, and Dennis Politic is there for his first goal in a Cambridge shirt, other than the preseason friendlies. He did score in the preseason friendlies, but great ball from Dixon Bonner, getting himself an assist. Politic jumping highest, and well, raises his arms aloft. The Romanian gives us the lead. Very good start here, very good start. Dixon Bonner with a lovely ball once again, this time out to Will Ferry. He just about controls it, gets it back across. Politic looking to run on it, flicks it back in. It's come back to Ferry, just flinging balls all over the place, but Ferry has flung a ball at Dennis Politic, who has grabbed himself his second goal of the season. Didn't, I mean, he didn't do much for Bolton last year in their relegation campaign, but already a glorious start to life in a Cambridgeshire, deft header from him again to give us a two-goal advantage away from home, a rare occurrence, certainly in the second half of last season. Early stages, but we're top of the table. Adam Ida's in here from a Lloyd-Jones pass, doesn't find the target. Hopefully he can sort of, you know, get himself a first goal early on and not get into that sort of rut of failing to score like he did last season. Half-time, though, what can you say other than that was excellent. Two of our new signings doing very, very well for themselves. Defensively, we're looking reasonable. There was that there was that brief chance, which Swindon had. Will Ferry's won it again, though. Finds Adam Ida running on. The Swindon defence is not able to catch him. It's bouncing all over the place, and it's been fired in by Tom Adeyemi, but it's bounced off Gabriel Zakuna, uh, or Zakawana, and, uh, well, great run from Ida. Puts it across. Save is initially there, and then Adi Amy fires it into Zakuna. He doesn't know anything about it, really. Can't help. I mean, he, he shouldn't be. He's facing the complete wrong way. He was just standing looking back at the goal, which is a bit odd. We're in again here. Ida, can he get his first goal? Pulls it back to Politic, and he does get his first goal, but he is unfortunately offside. That looked a little bit tight, but it's it, it's been given as offside, so we can't argue with it. 3 0 up. Fantastic performance so far. Lloyd Isgrove looking to get Swindon back into it. Running down the right-hand side. It's, it's gone all the way through. We get the ball away, though. Politic flings it forwards to Adam Ida. This time he is onside, and this time he does score. Opens his account for the season. All about that take and pass from Dennis Politic. What a ball that is. Ida takes it brilliantly, times his run to perfection, and he finishes with style runs into the corner. The Cambridge fans are loving this trip to Swindon. 4-0 up. 4-0 up. Well, Swindon have got a goal back. As I've said that, obviously. There's still time in this game. There's still time for us to throw it away. Um, free kick comes in, and Tom Field this time, the own goal recipient. Zakuna gets his revenge with that one, putting it away against Tom Field. But we're still going. So Swindon coming forwards here. We, you know, we're four nil up. We shouldn't be complacent. Twine's in. Scott Twine makes it four two, and in the space of seconds, our our lead has been halved. This, I mean, this is just simple ball over the top. Two defenders having a chat with each other, and the, okay, I mean, act, action packed. The the fans are getting their money's worth for this one. Let's not chuck away a four goal lead though. That would be that would be dreadful if we did that. I'm going to demand more. Um, as Swindon come forwards again, Woolery on the left-hand side. Brown stops him. He is on a yellow card, so don't don't get sent off. Addy Amy with the ball forwards to Adam Ida. This time Henry makes the save. They just about get it away. And well, I mean, we're, it's, we're a little bit little bit nervy at the back. Still, that is the case. But I mean, attacking-wise, we're looking quite good. Swindon though coming forwards again. Four-three would be bad. Let's not make it four-three. Hunt puts it across. It's, is it a penalty? It's not a penalty. Donahue puts it back across. Can we please just clear the ball? Thank you. Adam Ida is away again. Can he get his second to seal it? No, he can't. Goodness me, so much action in this one. Dixon Bonner from the corner. And, well, Twine's, Twine's in again. Twine's in again. Bring him down. Not in the penalty box. But it's a save by Burton. I mean, if we actually do throw away a four-goal lead, that will be... I mean, it'll be epic, but not in a good way. Not in a good way. James Brown back to Lloyd. Flings it towards Ida. He's been very involved today. Twines in again. Burton this time tips it over. And he was offside. It's 15 minutes to go. Can we... I mean, we're only going to do one game anyway. But definitely with all this action, James Brown puts it across. And Will Ferry misses an open goal. That would surely have sealed it. Still, I mean, we are on key highlights, aren't we? 
we are on key. There's just so much stuff happening. A Addy Amy to Ida nearly makes it five. Oh, can I just catch my breath, please? Please. There's still nine minutes of this. And then, then, then there's extra time. Terrible ball from Boone, straight to Twine. Luckily, he misses. I've not made any substitutions. I don't, I don't really want to, because it will just extend this. It's still going. Corner comes in from Swindon. Zakuna can't find, can't find anyone. Uh, Doughty puts it over the bar. Uh, we're into injury time. There's still five minutes to throw away, throw away the lead we've got. Dennis Politic, please make it five. He doesn't make it five. Saved by Henry. Right, time's gone. There we go. We're done. Full time. It's a win. 4-2. What an absolutely crazy action-packed game that was to start the season. Some fantastic ratings for our forward players. Really good to see. Excellent from them. Even the defence didn't get a low rating, despite some pretty kamikaze things. Excellent performance from the boys. Well done. And at this early stage, to get a win on the board is always a good thing. Very good performance from the front three, especially there, which bodes well for the rest of the season. Now, we're going to go relatively far on, I think, certainly through the rest of August. We'll come back in September. I don't know when exactly. Maybe QPR, because they're one of the relegated sides. QPR and Gillingham, that sounds like it could be an option. Somewhere around then, we'll see how well we've adjusted to life in a higher division. But that is going to be the end of the episode today. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the end-to-end -end win against Swindon. Let me know what you think of the signings and make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss the next episode and the rest of our second season as a manager, which will probably be in charge of Cambridge for the entire thing, but you never know. You never know. Thank you very much and I will see you next time.